Hey, good morning. I know that most of us are missing Sunday school because of the coronavirus, but you can't miss Sunday school, right? You can't miss Sunday school. So I want to just pull out a few key points in the lesson uh, from this week. Um, in the lesson in the David C. Cook, the Echoes book here is Need for Just Leaders. Need for Just Leaders. Um, listen, this is what it says, the lesson focus warning does your example help or harm? And we're going to talk about that in just a second. The lesson comes from Malachi chapter 2, Malachi chapter 2, verses 1 through 6, and then 2, 7 through 9, and then lastly, 5 through 7. And I'm not going to read it all for you, but if you want to go back and read in Malachi chapter 2, verses 1 through 6, then Malachi chapter 2, verses 7 through 9, and then lastly, Malachi chapter 3, verses 5 through 7. Now, here's the thing I want you to remember. This is, this is what the Lord says at the beginning of this passage through Malachi. It says, here's the thing. He says, and now you priests, this is a warning for you. Reading the NIV. If you do not listen, and if you do not resolve to honor my name. Listen, this is the thing that really stuck out to me when I was reading this. God does not get joy out of punishing his children. Think about that. God does not get joy out of punishing his children. He's saying, this is a warning if you do not listen. What does that mean? He's already set a standard. Number one, he's already set a standard. He's already observed their behavior that it didn't match the standard, right? But now he's giving a warning. He didn't go directly to punishment. He given a warning. He set a standard, right? He observed that they didn't match the standard. Then he sends a warning. He does not just go directly into punishment. So for some of us who struggle um, with um, the weight of past sins and things of that nature, when God has convicted you and you've converted and you've changed and you've repented and moved on from that thing, God is still not waiting to punish you, right? So, so don't use that type of mentality, that type of mindset. Whatever the sin may be, he, he removed it. The scripture says he removed it as far as the east is from the west. It's gone right? It's gone. And even here, even though he's observed that their behavior has not matched the standard, what he's saying here is, if you do not listen, I will send a curse on you and I will curse your blessings. He says, because I will rebuke your descendants and I'm going through, I will smear faces of dung from your festival. And all of these things are because if you do not do this, it's almost as if God is begging them, right? God is begging them to repent. You know, the sad news about this, if you read the whole book of Malachi, every time he convicts them, they question him. Would they say something like, he says, y'all not matching the standard. He's like, yeah, but they're not matching the standard either. He said, well, you all aren't doing what I asked you to do. Yeah, but if you would have blessed us more, we would have done it. Think about this. So every time there was conviction, every time there was conviction, guess what happened? They had an excuse. It was somebody else's fault. It's somebody else's responsibility. It's not their fault. It's because of someone else. And that's something we have to be very mindful of. Now, I'm going to the second outline here when it talks about the consequences. It says, for the lips of a priest ought to preserve knowledge because he is a messenger of God. And people should seek instruction from his mouth. So a word for you if you are a leader. Do people seek your counsel? Think about that. Do people seek your counsel? If people don't seek your counsel, if people don't really care what you have to say about an issue, are you really leading them? Think about that. If they're making major life decisions without even seeking you, are you really their leader? Look what it says here. Look what it says here. He says the people should seek instruction from your mouth, but you've turned away. The leader, you've turned away. And he says, so I have caused you to be despised and humiliated before all the people. Here's the thing, because you have not followed. I set a standard. You didn't observe the standard. I've warned you and I've warned you and I've warned you and you still don't do it. So what happened? I despised and humiliated you. I took away your blessings. I took away your covering, the hand of the Lord on your life. I've taken it away because you refuse to obey. But then here's the last outline, Malachi 3 verses 5 through 7. It says an alternative. That's how it's titled. It says, so I will come to put you on trial. I will be quick to testify 
against sorcerers, adulterers, and perjurers, against those who defraud laborers of their wages, who oppress the widows and the fatherless and deprive the foreigners among you of justice. But do not fear me. Look what it says here. Ever since the time of your ancestors, you have turned away from my decrees and have not kept them. But listen, listen. He's saying, you ain't done right. I know you ain't done right. Your track record, you ain't done right. But li listen how the lesson ends, and this gives me great joy. It says, return to me, and I will return to you. Isn't that good news this morning? Return to me, and I will return to you. You see what I'm saying? You return to me. I, 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 listen, I know you've done all this wrong. I know you've done all this stuff that's against me. I've set a standard. I've observed that you hadn't met the standard. I've warned you, I've warned you, I've warned you, I've warned you. Even though I make you go through some of the consequences of your choices, he still ends the lesson with this, return to me and I will return to you. That, that, to me, that's good news. That's the message of the cross. That's the message of grace. He, he returned to us, right? He returned to us. He came. He died on the cross. He returned to us. And then it says he's coming back for us. I'm excited now. He's coming back for us. So here we have no reason to worry. We have no reason to fret. Here's the thing. Even if we've messed up, he, he, he said, repent, move on, return to me. And I will return to you. That's good news this Sunday morning. And I hope that as you go through your day, be mindful of God's expectations. Be mindful that he's always observing our behavior. He's always observing our behavior. And lastly, lastly, if we fall short, all have seen to come short of the glory. So that's you too. That's you too, right? All have seen to come short. He says, return. Return to me and I will return to you. Have a great Sunday. Talk to you later. Bye.